It is uh, my distinct privilege and pleasure today, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome to our stage right here in the Rushmore Mall, astronaut Buzz Aldrin. Hi. It, it was clear that uh, President Kennedy, when he took office, had a situation that required to him that we do something about Sputnik, beep, 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 and the Germans' V-2 rocket. We were sort of behind. So we had to advance our technology and do something to inspire the people into these technological fields, like we're doing now with STEM. But we needed something to inspire people. And we just discovered uh, about six months ago at a hundredth anniversary of uh, MIT, the Aeronautics Astronautics Department. There were some people who were around way back and they said, President Kennedy wanted to go to Mars in 1961. And the people at NASA <laughs> knew that a senator from Massachusetts just was not too informed about what we could do. So they had to convince him and they only had a weekend to do it. So that was a busy, busy weekend and they went back and, and told the president, sir, we, we, it's just not time yet to be able to get to Mars, but we think maybe we could uh, beat the Soviets by getting to to the moon, maybe 50, 15 years. Well, of course, uh, that wasn't going to do because Kennedy was going to leave office before that. So he uh, said within a decade to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely. Sputnik, 1957, there wasn't a lot of cooperation in the world with the Russians who were first able to put a beep, 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 beep satellite up there. And among other things, that's what prompted President Kennedy and the United States to begin to realize we need to catch up. We have this great country and we're being uh, pushed back into second place. The best way to move around is to not just one, then the other, then the other, but it's sort of like a horse uh, galloping. Their front legs go boop, 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 boop. And if you think about it, when the, when the first foot hits the ground, you're not exactly secure, but that other one comes down and it helps to study you and by the time that's over then you go and make another leap we made a very soft landing so the the landing gear did not compress very much and that sounds good except the ladder is on the front landing gear and if it didn't compress that means the bottom rung of the ladder was a little higher off the surface. And just to be prepared in case things became a little energetic, if we had to run away from some aliens or something like that, we, we might be kind of tired. But we wanted to know if we could jump back up and get on the ladder. It'd be kind of bad news if we couldn't. <laughs> yeah.
because there wasn't anybody up there to throw us a rope. So Neil jumped up and uh, down. And he, that was before he took his moment of glory of one small step for man, a giant leap for mankind. We're still looking for that giant leap, but I got down the bottom of the ladder. Now, what can I say to, to match that? <laughs> magnificent desolation. Just think, all, all these years and years humans have been on this earth and for the first time we're going to walk on, on another surface. Now, how could a little kid from New Jersey whose mother was born 1903, the year the Wright brothers flew, have an aviation pioneer for a father, and have one of the greatest education foundations to learn how to do things in space. Innovation, look for different ways of improving things. That is what I hope I will known for as a futurist in space, a patriotic futurist. Thank you.